Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you again this morning. And it's good also to hear good news. The great news that Brother Kenny says to us this morning is so wonderful to know that now the property belongs to the church of Christ, belongs to the Lord. It is also good to hear good news. So my recommendation is prepare your hearts and your mind to continue listening, listening good news. To prepare your mind to listen to the lesson for this morning. This is the best news that we can hear or the mankind needs to be ready to hear the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, thanks to the elders, thanks to the congregation for the invitation. Uh, last time I was teaching about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I, I was teaching that the Lord has really risen. That was my, la my last topic that I thought a couple of months ago. Now this lesson, the title of this lesson is The One Who Lives Forever. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. I'm going to read it again. Therefore, he is able also to save forever those who draw near to God. Through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. That one who lives forever is Jesus Christ. Thanks to... Uh, to Brother Ed for the scripture reading, thanks to Derek for the songs, and for this last one song. We know that our Redeemer lives, and he is interceding for us. This is like a second part of the last lesson that I preach. Uh, I understand, I, I know that the elders were agree with me in my last lesson. We were believing, all of us believing that the Lord is really risen. If we believe that the Lord is really risen, so we are going to continue believing that He is living forever. He is the one who lives forever, according to Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is a biblical sign of the deity of Jesus. He proved that he is the Son of God. He mentioned many times, I am the Son of God. He performed many miracles, signs, to demonstrate that he was the Son of God. But remember that also the prophets in the Old Testament performed miracles. So that's me, that the people could thought that he was one more like the other prophets. But the reason or the proof or the evidence that he raised does demonstrate that he is really the Son of God or the living God. The temple, he challenged, he challenged his enemies, he challenged his adversaries, he challenged the youth, destroy, he said, destroy the temple. And I shall restore the temple in three days. His adversary, the multitude, you said, How is possible? This man is crazy. That's not possible. It took 46 years to build the temple. We read that discussion in John chapter 2, verse 18, verse 22. That's not possible. The youth said, that's not possible. It took 46 years to build the temple, and this man is saying that in three days he's going to rebuild it again. But the context says that Jesus was talking about his temple, his own body. He was talking about his resurrection. But they were blind. They didn't see no more 
than the physical eyes. And that's the problem that we are having now, the human beings. We don't see beyond. We only see the things, the physical things. But there are something more that we really need to see. And that one is the real God. If we see the real God, the real things, we're going to be changing our mind. We're going to be different. We're going to be different people. We are going to be practicing the justice, not the sin. But they didn't, they didn't see more than the physical eyes. They only saw the physical temple. But according to the Bible, according to the New Testament, our body is also our temple. It's a temple. It's a temple. The reason that this body was created was the reason to worship and to serving the living God. Not for serving Satan. Not for serving our desires. Not for serving the flesh. Not for sinning. Just for serving the living God. We wake up this morning with energy, with the desire to come right here to the temple, to the building, to see one another. But the main reason for worshiping God, for adoring God. So we have to use this member and this body for that. And so they saw no, that's not possible. But the Lord was talking about his resurrection. First question for us, what does the resurrection mean for you and me? And a second question, why is it important? And the third question, what does it say to us about Jesus? We should be responding these three questions in the following minutes. Why? Why is important the resurrection? What does the resurrection mean for you and me? And what does it say to us about Jesus? All these three questions say that Jesus is living forever, that he is the one who lives forever. And the resurrection is so important and it's so important that he he's living forever because he is able to save forever those who draw near to God through him. If he is alive, if he is living forever, also he is able to save all those who draw near to God, through him, not through Buddha, not through Mohammed, not through Joseph Smith, not through um, a good preacher, not through me, not through Peter, not through Paul, but through Jesus. Jesus is the way. He is the one who is living forever. And he is the one who is able to save everybody. He's able, the one who lives forever, is able to forgive our sins. In Acts chapter 2, verse 38, we read the preaching of the, of the apostle Peter and the rest of the apostles. They were preaching and teaching and persuading and accusing the multitude of the youth, you kill the Son of God. But now, the Son of God is sitting to the right hand of the majesty of the Father. In other words, now the Son of God is living forever. You kill him, but he is living forever. And he is able to forgive you if you repent. And we read in the Acts, 
in the chapter 2 of verse, verse 38 of the book of Acts, Peter said, Peter and the, and the rest of the apostles said to the multitude, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. For what? For the forgiveness of your sins. He said, boy, Peter and the apostle were teaching all the time about the resurrection of Jesus, and also they were teaching all the time that Jesus is able to forgive to everybody. We only need to come to him and to repent, and he is able to forgive. This has to be our message every day, to be teaching about Jesus, that he's able. He's able to forgive our sins. But he's not only able to forgive our sins. The Bible teach, teach to us in John chapter 1, verse 12, that he is able to make us children of God. If we get cross and we approach to the Lord, Verse 12 says, John chapter 1, verse 12, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. We only need to believe in his name, and he is able to make us children of the Father even to those who believe in his name. His name means his authority. It's, this is similar like to say when the, a police officer is following a criminal or a robber and the police said to the criminal, stop in the name of the law. He got, he's saying authority. The word name right here means authority in the name of Jesus. Jesus got the authority of the Father to say everyone, to make to everyone children of the Father. But we need to recognize that he is able to do this one. He's able, the one who is living forever, is able to be with us in our problems. Problems. This is a hard war. Every, every moment we got problems. Every day. People sometimes is thinking that if they come to Jesus or they become Christian, no problems anymore. Even some preachers, I hear sometimes some preachers teaching that. Or come to Jesus and everything is going to be peace. That's not true. That's not true. Problem, we're going to have problems every moment. We're going to have problems every time. But he is able to be with us in our problems. We need to believe that. It's hard to believe this sometimes. We are disappointed. We don't see more beyond that the things that are happening in that moment. But we hear some rings or some calls of brothers encouraging us, brother, it's going to be okay. Let's continue trusting in the Lord. Let's continue being faithful and he's going to be with us. And that's true. He is with us in our problems. He was with his son. The father was with his son in his problems when he was in this earth. He was with him. He continued being with us in our problem. He was with the apostle. But Jacob was murdered. One of the apostles. One of the deacons was murdered. The other apostles were murdered years later. But Jesus is able to be with us in our problems. There is something more than this physical life. There is the eternal life. That, that's the most important part 
or the most important life that we are being seeking for it every day, every moment. But the Lord, the one who lives forever, is able to be with us in our problems. Don't forget that. Just believe it. He's able to take us to heaven. That's so important to believe that he raised. That's the reason it's so important, his resurrection. Because he lives forever and he is able to take us to heaven. Do you believe that? I know that you believe this. I believe this with all my heart. That he is able to take me heaven when I pass away. He was able to take heaven Stephen, one of the deacons, one of the seven deacons. The multitude of youth were angry, upset, when they heard the preaching of Stephen. We get angry or upset sometimes when we are hearing the truth and we, and, and we don't want to accept the truth. They were angry. What did they, they, they decide? They decide to kill him. We are going to stomp this man. We are going to shut up his mouth. And the way is killing him. But the truth continue to be announcing for others that are believing the truth. And they decide to kill Stephen. But the Lord Jesus was able to take him to heaven. Stephen said, Lord Jesus, take my spirit. Receive my spirit. Lord Jesus. That was his prayer. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. In other words, save me. Save me heaven. And the question is, was Jesus able to take heaven to Stephen? Amen? He was able. What about the robber on the cross? Do you remember the robber? The robber said, remember me, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. What was his answer? Truly, truly, I say to you, this is so true. I'm not lying to you. You shall be with me in a thousand years. When I came back in my kingdom and and resurrect you. You will be with me in paradise. It was that his answer? Not. Not. The Lord said to the robber, you shall be with me today. Today. In paradise. I'm going to take you heaven today. Because you are believing in me that I am the one who is going to be living forever. You are believing in me that I am the one that is the Son of God. If we believe in Him, He's going to be able to take us to heaven, to forgive our sin, to make us children of God, and to be with us in our problems. It's so wonderful to know this and to believe this. He's able, the one who lives forever, is able to raise us up when he returns. We're going to be dying sooner or later, physically. But we are hoping the resurrection of all bodies. And the Lord Jesus in John chapter 5, 25, he's saying, he's saying, Truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming, and now is when the dead will hear the voice 
o the Son of God. And those who hear will live. Those who hear will live. The hour is coming. The hour of the resurrection. When I return. And many will hear my voice. But let me tell you something. These ones that are going to be hearing the voice of the Son of God are the same people that heard his voice when they were living in this earth. In other words, it's necessary to hear his voice now. Now that we are alive, physically. To hear it again when we were dead. It's the same people. The other dead will hear also his voice, but are going to be resurrecting, the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians, after these ones. First, it's going to be immediately. Remember, now is the Lord. All the time, the Lord is controlling the time. But the thing that I want, I mean, is that now is not going to be more time. It's like, like we said, the clock was stopped. No more time. Now the Lord is deciding. This is going to be happening immediately, one thing after the other. When I was a kid, I heard many preaching, pre preachers and preachings and people saying, oh, it's going to be some time when the Lord come back to repent and to be saved. I don't think so. Everything is going to be so fast, immediately. We have to be prepared now. We have to obey now. We have to hear his voice now. We need to obey now. Now is the time of salvation. Today. So this one that will hear his voice is the same one. Same group that heard his voice when they were alive. Physically alive. John chapter 5, verse 25. He said he's available. The one who lives forever, he's not only able, he's also available. Available for what? Available to those who draw near to God. It's so good to hear this one, that the Lord is able and the Lord is available. Sometimes we, we call people and we, we, we hear or they respond, I'm not available at this time. I can help you. But it's so good to know that the Lord Jesus is available all the time. Is available to those who draw near to God. Jesus is always available to let people come to him. He was available for the children. Matthew chapter 19, verse 13 through 15. The parents brought the children to Jesus, to Jesus, Bless them and lay his hand on them. But there was a problem at that time. The apostle. The apostle hindering the people, the parent, stopping the parent. No, don't bother the Lord. You know what? Sometimes we are hindering that people get near to Jesus with our conduct, with our bad example, with our bad testimony. Let's be careful. We have to be, we need to be light. We need to be lining all the time. 
The people need this to see our good example, and the people is going to be glorifying God and nearing to God always. But what, what Jesus said to the apostle, do not let the children along. Or let the children in peace. Do not hinder them. He rebuked his apostles. Do not hinder them from coming to me. He is available. And he asked something else. The kingdom of God belong people such as them. We need to be like children to get into the kingdom of God. He is available all the time. Glory to the Lord for that. He was available for the blind Bartimaeus. I already talked about this. This man. Jesus of Nazareth, of Nazareth is passing by. That was the title of my lesson. And the blind was crying out, Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on me. And the people rebuked him, stop, be quiet. And he continued crying out louder and louder, Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on me. And Jesus said, bring me that man. What do you need? How can I help you? What can I do for you? Unavailable also for you. Not only for the multitude, I'm also available for you. I need to receive my sight. And he received his sight. He was available for this man. Mark chapter 10, verse 46 through 52, we read that, about that story of this blind man. What about Zacchaeus? He was a short man like me. Too hard for him to see the Lord or to approach to the Lord because of the multitude. And he thought, I'm going to climb. The tree. I'm going to be able to see the Lord. The Lord said to him, Zacchaeus, I'm available also for you. Not only for the multitude, also for you. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is also available for you and for me. This morning is available all the time. Even if we have pushed him aside, he is available for us. Even if we have rejected him in the past, even if we said, I don't want to know nothing about Jesus that is called the Christ. That's a, a wrong story. That's a false story. That's not true. He didn't exist. He's not the son of God. Jesus said, even if you reject me in the past, I'm available for you. Invoke. Call on. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and verse 13. His holy name and he's going to be available for you. If you confess, verse 9, Romans chapter 10, verse 9, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart, you shall be saved. If we invoke and we call on the, his name, 
is going to be available to save us. In, in verse 13, whoever, whoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever, no matter if you are poor or rich, no matter if you are yellow or white, you shall be saved. It's available for all those who are begging to the Lord, who are trying to find the Lord. He's available for them. He's with his open arms available for everyone. And one third part of this lesson, he lives He always lives to make intercession for them. He always lives. This is so good to know this one. He always lives for that, to be interceding for us. He's finished an unfinished work. He finished a part of his work. But he's not stopping of working. He continue working. He's finished work. His work of redemption was finished on the cross. The plan of the Father was fulfilled on the cross. But what about his acts of intercession continue today? He's a God that is working all the time. He never stops working. He's never on, vac on vacation. He's always able and available because he's living. He's the living one. He's interceding every moment for us. When we sing and we confess our sin and we repent, He's ready to intercede for us. This is our God, the one who lives forever. Because he lives, we have a secure future and we sing a song. Because he lives, we can face him tomorrow. Because he lives, all fears are gone. Because he lives, remember, we are believing and we are adoring and we are glorifying and we are praising a God who lives forever. His name is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So because he lives, we have a secure future. Future, we are not fearing. We are sad sometimes. We are in trouble sometimes, but we continue trusting in him. His promises are for sure, are true. He's not lying. We do not face the test alone because he lives. We got test, but we are not alone. He is with us. In conclusion, the one who lives forever wants to forgive you, save you, make you his child this morning. If you are not a child of God, he wants, he invites you to become to him. How shall you respond to him? He says, whoever believes and be baptized shall be saved. We got water right here. You need to be baptized. If you are a Christian and you need to confess and come back to the Lord, we also invite you. Thank you so much, brothers and sisters, and the lesson is yours.